Hi everyone. Uh, today I'm here to discuss about uh, our recent publication on surface potential equation for low effective mass channel common double gate MOSFET. I myself Ananda Shankar Chakraborty. I'm a PhD researcher at the Nanoscale Device Research Laboratory of IIC Bangalore. So we begin with our discussion. First, uh, we would like to start with the very reason behind the research on low uh, density of state material. So why do we choose that? Because uh, we all know that as we are moving ahead with time, uh, we want to cater the ever increasing demand of uh, increasing speed of circuital operation within limited power and area budget. So how do we achieve that? Uh, over here we see the equation intrinsic gate delay if we can increase the on current uh, we can ach actually achieve a lower intrinsic gate delay that thereby higher speed so how do we achieve that uh, we see that the on current is proportional to the mobility and which is inversely proportional to the effective mass so if we choose a material which has got low effective mass as we can see from the table above that uh, mainstream silicon has got much higher effective mass than the rest of the material. So these materials actually, these are 3-5 uh, materials, combination of 3-5 materials and germanium I have provided. So this material actually gives me, uh, give me that, uh, uh, that property thereby I can increase the on current. So coming into the very modeling aspect of low density of state uh, MOSFET. Here we modeling engineers we face certain challenges which were nearly absent in uh, conventional silicon MOSFET that is high quantum confinement due to ultra thin film and small effective mass as we all know that if we reduce the dimension and uh, as well as the effective mass we the all the energies all the energy subbands they they uh, they get distant from each other and uh, yeah that that is that that is uh, can that can be seen actually from the adjoining figure here the film thickness is 5 nanometer and there is another thing on small effective mass that actually uh, increases the quantum mechanical tunneling through the oxide and the degeneracy where the the degeneracy condition due to which the, the Fermi level res resides much above the minima of conduction band so we cannot apply the Boltzmann's uh, statistics which we used to apply in conventional silicon MOSFET we have to stick to the uh, total Fermi Dirac statistics. Uh, so these are the three primary challenges we have to include, we have to address in our modeling. So this is the basic modeling methodology I'm, I have tried to explain in one slide that is uh, we have to address the high quantum confinement using Schrodinger equation which gives us the electron wave function and the allowed subband energies and the electrostatics is governed by Poisson's equation and over here we can see that the in Schrodinger equation there are two terms uh, subband energy eigenvalues and the electronic wave function both are actually again they are going into the Poisson's equation uh, and the Poisson's equations electric field is again affecting the potential term Vx of the Schrodinger equation. So that actually constructs a loop and solving such uh, equation in loop or uh, self-consistent equations it's a job of uh, numerical simulators. So our present problem statement is obtaining analytical solution of such a self-consistent pair. So what we do about that? we need to break the loop. So how do we achieve that? We first make an assumption, this valid assumption we have discussed that in detail, in detail in our paper. 
so we first approximate the uh, electronic wave function as the flat band electronic wave function only so why how could we make that because the wave functions are uh, generally sinusoidal in nature in this case so that's why the maximum minimum value is plus or minus 1 and that's that's why this is a weak function and on the other hand the charge concentration we have in log term log of 1 plus e to the power that's a more uh, that's a stronger function of uh, subband energies so we have seen we have done simulations and we have provided those plots that actually show how like the if we, if we keep the ground state wave function or the flat band wave function in place or we make that assumption as the wave function is throughout the flat band wave function the overall charge density doesn't change to that extent so this is one this is one assumption and another assumption uh, another way of getting rid of the um, loop is that uh, we provide perturbation we add perturbation on top of the uh, ground state or the flat band uh, sub band energy eigenvalues and uh, we put uh, that into the Poisson's equation as EI. So in our in in this modeling methodology, the Schrodinger equation gets solved only once. That is during flat band, and we add those things into the Poisson's equation along with the perturbation, and that actually gets solved as we vary the bias. These are some previous <coughs> works on low density of state uh, double gate MOSFETs and they had certain shortcomings and sh certain limitations which we tried to address in our paper. So one of the major disadvantages of the previous works that most of them uh, address the quantum well geometry using the a combination of triangular and square well that is this approach is kind of uh, semi-empirical empirical we can say some didn't take into account the prevalent oxide penetration into uh, preval into their model and that's a major drawback of those models some actually made uh, some some sort of abrupt assumptions logically which are absolutely logically incoherent in in, in their works and all of the previous models use semi-empirical or empirical uh, model parameters and uh, all of them addressed only symmetric oxide thickness we uh, that therefore we uh, tried to develop a model which is totally physical in nature and uh, we took into account the oxide penetration and we have addressed the issue of uh, asymmetry also in our model and without ever breaking uh, the lo main logical flow that we have uh, shown de in paper in detail. So this is the basic roadmap of the work we followed. First we need to as we as I explained the first we need to solve the 1D Schrodinger equation in the x direction because x direction is the direction of confinement and we do that in flat band only once uh, we take into account the wave function penetration thereafter we uh, do a very important part we uh, we compute the location of the minimum potential point or the zero electric field point inside the body of the device because that is actually going to play a very big part in our uh, whole model whole modeling development whole model development uh, we assume weak inversion and we develop uh, a compact model for the uh, minima point inside the body so and thereafter we can compute electric field and potential I am not going into details or uh, any uh, uh, 
big mathematical expressions uh, the viewer can easily download our paper and uh, see that for simplicity purpose i am just only sticking i am only sticking to the modeling methodology the general overview and thereafter comes the chart centroid how how do we address the chart centroid issue and compute the equivalent oxide capacitance uh, chart centroid effect is a very important effect when the overall dimension reduces uh, it arises due to the thinness of the film as we reduce the film thinness uh, film thickness uh, the charge centroid affect, uh, affects more prominently and we have to take into account that uh, issue in our model we actually made the oxide capacitance we express those oxide capacitance in form of equivalent oxide capacitance uh, after that we uh, moved into finding perturbation first and second order perturbation uh, of the subband energies and then in the subsequent sections i am going to show some uh, practical data how and why subband uh, perturbation is so important in our model and after completing all this we can uh, put all all of this uh, attributes into the final equation charge balance equation poisson equation and we can obtain the final surface potential equation or the spe so this is these are the two plots actually which clearly de demonstrate us the importance of perturbation in the left we have a plot for uh, 9 mil 9 nanometer thick device the eigen value is uh, i provided uh, it was 0.1 actually the 9 nanometer thick device it uh, it's during the flat band condition as we can we all see that all the uh, sub band eigen values they are flat the energy levels are flat and when i actually apply an electric field over here the gate volt effective gate voltage is 1.5 volt i apply an electric field the bottom of the conduction band it bends and the quantum well is no more a uh, square well and all the eigen values they change so that we in, in order to track the change we have we only have uh, we have only one option that is to uh, use the method of perturbation over the flat band energy uh, we have discussed the mathematics of the perturbation in detail in our paper so we would like to ask the viewer to download the paper again and see see that section for the details of the perturbation <coughs> mathematics involved in the perturbation so i have provided two graphs or the two bar charts to show the effectiveness of the perturbation or perturbation model the perturbation models are in the equations of 16 to 25 in the paper the blue ones are from our model proposed model and the red ones are directly from the numerical simulator or the tcat so uh, for the left one the left chart is for the ground state or the flat band condition and the right one is when i have applied a gate voltage of 1.5 volt over the flat band voltage and as we can see those uh, the bars as we can see from the bar charts that uh, the our model tracks our model agrees well with the tcad so it actually proves the effectiveness of our perturbation model we put all these things together and uh, we uh, just uh, use this relation total charge per unit surface area two gates is equal to charge per area inside the semiconductor that <coughs> actually gives us the final spe in equation 32 that is the final uh, surface potential equation as we have tried to develop through all these processes so value how do we validate the sp we compare we uh, compare the results with uh, a standard uh, numerical simulator suit that is silvaco ticad and the 
numerical simulator used is the atlas dev edit is uh, uh, edit is a, another platform that is within the silva cuticat so that uh, gives us the opportunity to uh, draw the structure make the structure that is a dot str file within the atlas uh, within sorry within uh, that within the silvaco and that structure file along with the meshes it's exported to the atlas for numerical simulation in atlas we need to provide the commands uh, show and ox dot show to uh, solve uh, cup, coupled Schrodinger and poison ox dot show actually tells the uh, simulator to solve within the oxide to sp.geom equal to 1dx it actually specifies the direction of confinement in the Schrodinger poison solver we can play with the material properties using the material statements mc is the electron effective mass uh, we have uh, tuned the value of mc to uh, vary the effective mass and uh, thereby varying the materials and all so these two plots <coughs> they are from directly from the pub, uh, they are directly from the paper we uh, through the via these plots we show that how effective the model is the, the all the datas all the datas from a uh, robust numerical simulator that well, agrees well with our model and uh, we have varied a number of subbands also and shown that uh, we can actually if one if one wants one can actually clip number of subband values to a certain minimum one one or one or two or three one can adjust the values as per the need and uh, obtain characteristics of a of, of the device of operation so this is this uh, this is the summary of the whole work so we have developed a purely physical surface potential equation and as we as i just discussed now the portability that we can uh, adjust the number of subbands in the final spe uh, if somebody wants to limit the number of subbands to some uh, little value or one or two for very high quantum confinement device one can do so easily by tuning the n max parameter in our model and our model evidently covers a wide range of semiconductor thickness effective mass and oxide asymmetry we have uh, given we have done extensive simulation on that and we have uh, shown these things in paper and effective gate voltage of 0 to 1.5 uh, so thus I would like to conclude that uh, we uh, this is uh, we can actually claim that for the first time we have achieved such a marvelous feat thank you for your attention i really appreciate your intent our work